I could just leave it there, I think. I'll just spend the next seven minutes saying the phone number and then meaningful observations. Please, meaningful observations, please. Do you have any meaningful observations to make about the by-election results in Rochdale last night? Give me a call on 03456060973. Uh, no, I did get it wrong. George was the cat. Rula Lenska fed George Galloway pretend milk. It was brilliantly horrible. OK, so you may have gathered from my tone that I am not taking this by-election result desperately seriously, uh, not least because Labour didn't have a candidate campaigning. So what it tells us about big pictures, I don't know. But don't please let any of this prevent you from ringing me immediately with your meaningful observations. 03456060973. So I, I like this. It's posted on Twitter by someone called Tom Freeman. If we project this result across the whole country, which is what everyone in studios today is doing very portentously. If we project this result across the whole country, then Labour will lose every seat in which they disown their own candidate and cease campaigning. So that's why it is not to be taken terribly seriously. There is a, 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 an almost Faragean streak of self-publicity in, in George Galloway. It, it was ever thus. He, he, the man can speak. I don't know if you ever saw him uh, giving evidence, I think, to a Senate committee in America when he was for fans of oratory and listen I know his record is is in many ways to many people pretty rancid uh, Nick did a fairly good job of reminding you of his greatest hits George Galloway's greatest hits for want of a better phrase but the but but the man's oratorial skills oratorical skills are, are quite impressive and uh, the only thing more if you like impressive than his oratorical skills is his capacity for self-promotion and making everything about him and that is what he has done in Rochdale and it, it has been successful but if we were to look for meaningful observations I think we would have to see this as quite an odd end to the political week because it has been a political week defined in many ways by the Conservative Party's problems with Islamophobia. The Conservatives' very real and continuing problems with Islamophobia. I don't know if you were listening yesterday when we had our regular monthly phone in with the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, but if you weren't, just allow me for a moment to tell you that I had never seen him like that before. I've, and I, I, I interview him every month, as you know, or rather you do. I, I put your calls to him every month. And he alluded to, to, to the fact that I sometimes ask him why, off air, I ask him why he is not more vocal about the filth that he endures. The, I mean, you will have seen some of it on social media, but trust me, the stuff that actually makes its way into the public arena is, is nowhere near as bad as the stuff that doesn't. The security levels that he is at because of threats from both the far right and Islamist fundamentalists are, I think, I think the highest of any politician in the country. So... While Rishi Sunak talks about mob rule and various Tories um, complain very uh, um, colourfully in the House of Commons about the threats to the security of politicians, the British politician who I think has the highest security level or certainly the highest level of protection from a potential terrorist threat is, is actually the one that Lee Anderson attacked and associated with precisely the sort of people that the police have to protect Sadiq Khan from. But he, he spoke yesterday of his heartbreak at what Lee Anderson has done, his heartbreak at what Lee Anderson had said. And, um, and it, was, it was actually very moving, uh, unless you are, I suppose, unless you're just not very nice. I, I, you know, I, I, even a politician that you have no time for at all can reach points at which you have to have sympathy just from a, from a basic well of humanity. I remember feeling sorry for Jacob Rees-Mogg when, when there was a mob protesting on his own doorstep and his children were inside. There, there are some behaviours that I think should transcend almost all party politics. There are a couple of politicians I, I, I would struggle to feel sorry for in most circumstances, but, but never in all circumstances. So the Tory party has had a nightmare week with regard to Islamophobia. Um, and yet it ends with George Galloway making political capital out of the Muslim vote in Rochdale. It, I mean, I don't know how much of the literature you've seen, but it was absolutely clear what he was playing at. The entire campaign was built on both wooing Muslim voters and bringing Gaza 
into the front and centre of British political discourse. This is a letter that he actually wrote and addressed to the voters of the Muslim faith in Rochdale, um, opening with the, with the greeting, uh, Assalamu alaikum. And he wrote, the last 130 days have shocked the Umar to the core. Uh, to its core. The killing of thousands of our brothers and sisters in Gaza is a war crime and Israel must be held to account. The political class have failed Rochdale, failed Britain and failed Gaza. I expect as much from the Conservative Party, but the Labour Party under Sir Keir Starmer have betrayed Muslims, choosing instead to support Israel's genocide in Gaza. Now, that is not normal business. And neither is it very pretty politics. We know that the general election, when it is finally called this year, is likely to be the ugliest ever, certainly the ugliest in living memory. And we perhaps didn't know in full until last night that the Labour Party in particular was going to be coming under attack from both sides. You're going to have the Islamophobic Conservative Party, where... Ministers cannot properly describe what Lee Anderson has done wrong because to do so would be to describe exactly what Suella Braverman has done as well. The Islamic uh, Islamophobic Conservative Party will be coming after Labour, while George Galloway and his ilk will be coming after Labour for not being supportive enough of Muslim people. This is a really hideous moment, you know? Because that describes an impossible political riddle. And if I were a Muslim, I'd be quite concerned about the way in which I am being turned into a political football that the people kicking don't really care about. So the Tories think that there is electoral capital to be accrued by accusing Labour of being too Muslim. And, and as people like Lee Anderson have demonstrated, they're supremely comfortable conflating Muslim with extremist or conflating Islam with Islamist. It's a disgusting and dangerous practice, but 30p Lee and his mates have decided that it is, it's worth doing. And then you've got George Galloway and his mates who've decided that there is political capital to be accrued by attacking Labour for in their words, being complicit in genocide in Gaza. And I just don't, well, the only thing I don't know, there's lots of things I don't know. I, I don't know how successful an electoral gambit it will be for the Tories to, to go all in on the culture wars like this, even though I'm not sure they have much choice. The only thing I don't know is how big George Galloway's gang is. So there are posters going up in Ilford, in, in West Streeting's constituency in Essex, which say a vote for Labour is a vote for genocide. The appeal to Muslim voters in constituencies where their numbers are high is going to be grim. It's going to speak directly to the heartbreak and horror that millions of us feel at the unfolding events in Gaza, where yesterday Israeli troops opened fire on Palestinian people who were queuing for food. That, that, that's a statement of fact. Because there are no journalists on the ground, there's room for confusion about precisely what happened with the Israeli government claiming that the shots were fired because the starving Palestinians were stampeding. The, the, the aid trucks claiming that, that most people dead were run over by trucks or crushed by each other. The doctor at the hospital, to which most of the casualties were taken, uh, says it looks to him like most of them were shot. But because there are no journalists or precious few journalists allowed into the territory, um, it's, it's, it is impossible to be absolutely 100% clear about what happened. But we do know that Israeli troops opened fire on starving Palestinians uh, crowding an aid convoy. And stories like that have become commonplace in, in the last few weeks. Stories like that have become... I don't think they'll ever be normal, but they have become commonplace in, in the last few months. And that's why there is a lot of emotion to appeal to. So I think, and I'm very grateful to everybody who has already rung in with meaningful observations uh, about this, but I think the question we need to answer is, how big is this? How big an issue is this for Labour? How worried should Labour be 
and I'm not sure it's even correct to talk about the Muslim vote here. How big an electoral issue is Gaza going to be for Labour? Now, I'm a little bit biased on this. I, I catch myself immediately reaching for damage limitation from, from Labour's point of view, not over the situation in Rochdale, that's a complete anomaly, but over the bigger picture. I, I find myself thinking that the numbers aren't big enough to move the dial. The kind of people minded to ring me and tell me that this is a huge problem for Keir Starmer and he's definitely not going to get my vote because of what's going on in Gaza, we're actually never going to vote for Keir Starmer at all. Or if, if you were, you would do so in the way that many people from the centre of the Labour movement voted for Jeremy Corbyn. You would do so while holding your nose. But it hasn't actually moved your needle at all. All it's done is, is, is confirm or embed your previous position. But I don't know, you see. That's my biases kicking in. I would like to believe that although I believe Keir Starmer should have gone further and faster with regard to calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, I would like to believe that it's not a matter of major electoral concern for him and his party because the main alternative in most constituencies in, in England and Wales, the main alternative in most constituencies in England and Wales would be the Conservative Party who have moved less far and slower than the Labour Party on this issue. 